Aloha Hawaii, ESPN 1420 is bringing to you a new platform called ESPN 1420 Tube, and we're gonna be kicking off a brand new segment we like to call Golf and Grind. It's a brand new segment, we're gonna introduce you some great golf courses, some great places to eat. So here we are, welcome on the west side to Kapolei Golf Club, the home of our first segment of ESPN 1420 Tube, Golf and Grind. Welcome. Welcome to Kapolei Golf Club, and we are doing our first segment of ESPN 1422 called Golf and Grinds, and we know how to study right. Left to me, we have Golf Nanama, the man who knows how to get it done. Ladies and gentlemen, Tad Fujikawa. How's it going, Tad? Pretty good, pretty good. Very excited to have you. This is the first segment of Golf and Grinds, and uh, you know, you, you were such an inspiration for the state of Hawaii. Everybody in Hawaii wants to know, so what is Tad doing now? Uh, still playing golf. Uh, I live in Georgia most of the year. Uh, I come back to Hawaii once in a while, but uh, mostly up there and playing tournaments, uh, doing qualifiers, and trying to get some status on, on the web.com and PGA. So uh, just trying to work my way up. Well, you were definitely one of the youngest golfers to qualify for the Sony Open and the US Open. So glad to see you're still playing golf. Um, how often do you come back to Hawaii? Uh, I come back usually just once or twice a year. Um, I usually come back for December, January, kind of this time, um, just to spend time with family and also for the Sony. So um, <clears throat> that's that's basically the only time most of the year I stay up in Georgia. It's just it's too far and <laughs> hard to travel. So well, glad to have you back here in Hawaii. What is the next steps for uh, Tap Uh To go back to Georgia and to to hopefully get some status, I'm going to try to do the Canadian tour, um, but I have to do the Q school for that. So. Just kind of depends on how that goes, um, but hopefully I can get some status there and, and uh, try to play some good golf. Well, we wish you all the luck. Um, as you can see, we are at this beautiful golf course called the Kapolei Golf Club. Tell us a little bit about why you like this course. Um, you know, I've I've, uh, I've played well here m most of the time. Um, there's not too many tournaments around here, but uh, I like the golf course. The people here are great. Um, it's fun to play. Uh, you know, it's just, it's very enjoyable, um, you know, everything about this course is good, uh, the restaurant's nice as well, and uh, it's just, it's just a fun place to be. All right, so we're all set, so the first segment of Golf and Grinds, we're ready to have some fun with Tad Fujikawa here at the Kapolei Golf Club. Hole one, I'm very excited to be playing here at Kapolei Golf Club, um, here with Andrew Ward again, tell us a little bit about hole one. Hole one, it's a great starting hole here at Kapolei, it's a par five. It's about 520 yards uh, from the tee here. It's a slight dog leg left. Um, you have water hazard down the left hand side that comes into play. Uh, large hills down the right hand side, so a great tee shot is key here. Um, and then uh, a precision layup shot. Um, those of you who hit it a little bit longer can go for the green in two. It's an elevated green that's uh, well guarded by some bunkers. So it's a great starting here hole to start out here at Kapolei. All right, here we go, first hole. I'm a little excited. I get to watch Tad play here. It's time to ask the pro, how would you play hole one? Uh, it's a good good par five here. Um, hazard down the left on the tee shot. So obviously you kind of want to stay away from that. Maybe favor the right side a little bit. Um, try to hit the fairway so you can uh, get get a good shot at it in two. But um, it's a it's a great par five starting hole. Um, you know, it gives you some room to hit it, and it's uh, looking forward to this round. Hole one, par five, here with Andrew Ward again. Tell us a little bit uh, about the fairway. So we're here in the fairway. Uh, Tad left himself in a great shot here on the right side of the fairway. Avoided the water hazard on left, which is a key. Um, and it's pretty wide open here on the right side, so even if you lose it a little bit right, it still leaves yourself a shot to the green. So you've got two options. You can either lay up, have a good approach shot, or if you're feeling bold, you can give it a go and try and get it on in two. This is why I'm excited. Great first shot. All right, so we're close to the green. Are you going to be bold and go for it? How do you approach this? Uh, not today. Um, you know, it just depends on, on what, what the wind direction is. Um, today it's into the wind, so it's not, uh, not really possible to, to reach the green today, but um, I'm going to try to get it as close as I can. Um, you know, everyone has, has different options here. You can lay up shorter or you can try to get it close to the green. So uh, it's, it's really a matter of personal preference, and uh, we'll see how it goes. 
Well, here we are. It was pretty quick because Tad's hitting. We are in hole one, par five. Uh, tell us a little bit about the green. So like many of the greens we'll see today, we have a two-tiered green here. Uh, slopes pretty severely from back to front. Um, requires a pretty precision shot, especially if you leave kind of a short wet shot or a short iron in your hands. Um, all depends on the pin out here. Um, if it's kind of in the front, you can kind of go for it. If it's in the back, it's a little trickier. There's a couple bunkers that um, guard the green here back and on the right side. This is why this is called Ask a Professional. Another great shot by Taz. You can see we're on the green. Par five, hole one. Taz, tell us uh, how you would approach this hole. Uh, this is a great green. Um, you know, for a par five, uh, it's it's on the smaller side, not too much trouble around it, but uh, it slopes from back to front, two tiered, so you kind of want to be pretty precise with the distance and, um, you know, uh, just depending on the pin placement, um, obviously you always want to try to leave yourself under the hole. Hole nine, how do you approach this shot? It's a great closing hole for the front nine. Um, it really requires a great drive here. You got a water hazard down the left hand side. Uh, you have a waterfall that kind of fronts the front left side of the green and then some bunkers on the right side So it really requires a great drive off the tee here at the ninth hole. Playing with Tad Fujikawa, of course It's time to ask the professional here at hole nine. How do you go ahead and play this hole? Um, hopefully stay out of the water hazard and stay out of the bunkers uh, Try to split split those two and keep it in the fairway um, It's a little shorter hole so you can you don't have to hit a really long drive here Just it's more about placement and control Hole nine, this is a beautiful hole, of course, with Andrew again. How would you approach the shot and tell us a little bit more about the green? So if you put a good drive in the fairway, middle of the fairway, it's going to leave you kind of a short to a mid iron in, um, obviously missing the water hazards off the tee. Um, the green's pretty well guarded. We got a water hazard. We have a little waterfall here, front left, and then also a bunker uh, kind of on the right side of the green. So this green uh, slopes from back to front. So depending on the pin, just like we see on a lot of hit holes out here, um, really depends on a good shot and then good speed control on the greens to uh, hopefully make a birdie. This is what life is like playing with Tad here. No editing here. This is his shot right here. Um, amazing shot, Tad. How did you approach the shot? Um, luckily, I was in the fairway. So I started off with a good drive and I had a good yardage in here. Um, you know, pretty short iron, so I could be aggressive and uh, just so happened I hit a good shot for the camera. So, <laughs> can't always do this, but uh, just so happened this is a good one. Just because not everybody can hit as good as Tad, we are going to move the ball so we can show you guys how to approach this green. I'm hitting from this way. Tad, how do you approach this green? Um, the, you know, this green tends to slope from back to front. So, we're behind the hole here, putting to the front. So, it's going to be a little quicker. Most of the time it breaks a little bit towards the water, so it's probably a little bit left to right. Um, but it's uh, this front part of the green is fairly flat, uh, not too severe, so uh, it's most of the time it's pretty straight. All right, here we are, last part three of the course, here with Andrew Ward. Uh, tell us a little bit about this uh, part three. So the 16th hole this is a great finishing part three for the golf course. It requires a good shot. Uh, it's about 150 yards from here uh, to a well-guarded green. Uh, with bunkers on the short right side, uh, kind of a slightly two-tiered green, and then a large uh, hill on the left that can either give you a great bounce on your shot or a non-rewarding bounce and kind of put you into a little trouble over there. Hole 16, I see water, I see sand, I'm a little scared. Ask the professional, how would you play this? Uh, I think we're all scared. Uh, this is a tough hole. Uh, the green's very skinny. Uh, it's very narrow and kind of long. Um, so your, your shot needs to be pretty accurate. Um, like any other hole out here, it's very, it's very dependent on the pin placement. Um, but you know, if you can just get it in the center of the green, you'll always have a pretty good chance. Par three, hole 16, tell us a little bit more about the green. So this green, it slopes from uh, back to front. Um, depending on where the pin is, uh, it can leave you a pretty, pretty speedy putt. Um, the pin's kind of in the back corner there. Um, kind of double breaks for you. Uh, a couple bunkers that surrounds this green too, so you know your approach shot when you hit it up on the green here um, could leave you in the bunker. But if you're on the green, it's a great hole to give it an attempt to make a birdie before you close out this last part three at Kapolei. Hole 16, par three, another great shot from 150 yards. Uh, how do you approach this green? Uh, this green slopes pretty severely from back to front. Um, so if you're below the hole, it's gonna be a little slower, and if you're above it, it's gonna be pretty quick. So um, just keeping that in mind. Uh, but ideally, you wanna stay below the hole as much as possible so you have an easy uphill putt. We are here at the signature hole. Tell us a little bit about hole 18. 
Hole 18, this is a par four. It's uh, 390 yards. It's uh, straight away. Uh, it's a great finishing hole here uh, at Kapolei. It's really framed well by uh, the fairway. Uh, we have a lot of hills on the fairway, some, some bunkers off the tee. And then also as you approach the green, we have a great view at the green. We've got a, a waterfall that runs along the left side of the green, uh, some bunkers that do come into play uh, on your approach shot, and then a two-tiered green. Um, so it really requires a great shot into the green, but it's also a great view finishing hole. Um, it's been on TV with a lot of our tour events, and we really feel like this is a great hole to finish when you're here at Kapolei. Signature hole, hole 18. Now it's time to ask the professional, Tad, how would you play hole 18? Well, um, you definitely want to stay down the right center of the fairway. There's a couple of bunkers down the left, so uh, you kind of want to avoid those uh, as much as possible. Um, obviously, d down the middle of the fairway is always good. All right, here we are on the signature hole, the fairway, with uh, golf professional Andrew Ward. Tell us a little bit about the signature hole fairway. Uh, the shot in on number 18, your second shot here in the fairway. It's a well-guarded green. We've got a waterfall that surrounds the left side of the green. We've got two bunkers on the right side of the green, so it really requires a great shot. Um, it's a two-tiered green, so really yardage control is a must here as you approach the 18th green here at Kapolei. All right, on the fairway of Signature Hole 18, a spot I would never be. It's time to ask a professional. Tad Fujikawa, how would you play this? Uh, this is a very tough second shot, probably one of the tougher ones on the course, um, but it's a great finishing hole. Uh, there's water kind of down the left, so it really depends on the pin placement, but for the most part, you kind of want to keep it to the right side, uh, just for safety purposes. <laughs> um, but, you know, it, it's, always, uh, it's always good to have good distance control on this hole. Um, the water kind of wraps around the green in the back, so uh, being able to control your distance is very important. Here at the signature hole 18 on the green with prof golf professional Andrew Ward, how would you play this hole? Well, this hole at 18, the green is uh, it's pretty difficult. It depends on where the pin is at. Um, if the pin's in the front like we have today, you can kind of go for the pin. Um, but if the pin's in the back left, the water really comes into play. So with the two-tiered green, your putting really has to be on focus here on the green. Okay, signature hole, no editing here. This is his actual shot here. This is Tap with the car, guys. All right, so you made an amazing shot, by the way. Um, speaking about this green, what, what are you, some of the things you need to watch for on this green? Um, this is a very tricky green. There's two tiers to it. It's very dependent on the pin placement. Um, but with this pin here, most of the time it breaks towards the water. Um, especially if you're behind it, it's a little bit quicker and it usually breaks kind of to the right towards the water. So um, hopefully uh, I can read this one correctly. It's been an amazing day here at Kapolei Golf Club. Of course, uh, we got to play with Tad Fujikawa. First of all, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks, sir. And I must say, we rarely did any edits. This guy is a true professional, and it was amazing to watch him play. So thank you so much for joining us this afternoon. Um, Tad, you know, I know you say you come back and forth from Georgia. What do you miss most about coming back to Hawaii? Um, you know, I miss the weather, uh, I miss the food, and I miss the people. And we know? talked about a little bit of some of your favorite foods. What are some of your favorite foods? Um, I like Korean food, I like dim sum, I like Japanese food. I'm not really picky. Um, you know, anything's good with me. <laughs> All right, so let's talk a little bit more about golf. Uh, tell me a little bit about your uh, equipment you use, favorite club. Uh, right now, I'm using Bridgestone, mostly Bridgestone equipment. I don't have any contracts. So I just use whatever I want, but uh, they take pretty good care of me. Um, my favorite club is probably my 7-iron. I don't know why it's the 7-iron, but it's, uh, it's probably the club I practice with the most, so I'm most comfortable with it. But um, hopefully I can get as comfortable with all clubs in the bag. That's the goal. And our next question, I was not aware of this, but I was going to ask him this question. <laughs> Where was your best game ever? Uh, coincidentally, my best round was 59 and here at Kapolei. Um, it, was, it was a great round. Uh, I've shot pretty low before, but never a 59. And, and that, was, uh, that was really special for me. Well, it's been an honor playing with you, Tad. Thank you so much for joining us. We look, uh, we look forward to watching you play and hear more about you. So once again, thank you, Tad. Thank you.